I am honest. <laughs> I have very heavy duty. I am sent to you to really get you out of the box. It's racism. It's also Darwinism. We are all programmed. Wrong understanding of Darwinism, probably practical reasons, pragmatism. Why in Sudan, the worst humanitarian crisis, it's still going on, although we activists, we scream for decades, even putting the fingers, who is doing? Even get sometimes very violent. We produced films, we produced books, we lobbied everywhere in all institutions. But nothing changed. And it's getting to be worse with not you. My beloved people. Once I cycled around the world for seven years, that was in the time when my country was in big troubles. I didn't want to kill. I didn't want to get guilty. I escaped it. I traveled it by bicycle for seven years. I passed all these countries in the war, too. I was in Tibet illegally. I met Dalai Lama, His Holiness. I published the first book on Tibet in Yugoslavia, in Slovenia at that time. So my heart learned to love you people, really. It learned because I was pushing the bicycle with one dollar a day, more hungry than full, in the war areas in conflict zones, but in the same time, I give this hand to so many people around the world that nobody will take away my love to humanity anymore. I was entitled, I was given so much attention, so much food, so much culture, so much spirituality, and so much respect by other common beings that of course, now I will not silent, I can't anymore. Although you will just beat me till I die, I will not give up my, in Slovenian language we have človekoljubje. I don't know English word for človekoljubje, but it's something with the love to the human beings. Not only animals, not only plants, not only minerals, not only energy, energy and other phenomena of the life on earth, but also to humanity. So I hate these people too, yes. And now I am addicted to them. Sudan, it's the worst humanitarian crisis on the planet. Nowhere else, not in Gaza, in Palestine, in Iraq, in Iran, in Tibet, in Chechnya. Nowhere else in the planet, people are suffering so much with so little attention of fellow human beings. Two million indigenous people died in the last war, which finished with a comprehensive peace agreement in 2005. Five million has been chased away from their homes. Now the war is starting again. My explanation is that because these are invisible people, they are indigenous people, and we killed them all already, everywhere, in America, in Aborig Aboriginal Australia, in the Eskimo land, in Polynesia, everywhere, because we are the victorious. We have beta guns for mass destruction. It's not our spirit that we are winning. It's not the heart. It's not the culture. It's not religion. It's just the guns. We shot them with Winchester. We killed them with maximum, with Maxim machine guns. In Sudan, from 20,000 to 100,000. It was the biggest battle of British Empire. And they portrayed the victory in British Museum like, oh, young boys, strong, full of will, kill the fuzzy woozy people with, with the sticks here and bones in the air. Savages, exterminate all the savages. That was the call in my civilization, in my culture. From Mesopotamian times, through Egypt, through Greece, through Roman, always we have been exterminating 
And then now we say they are weaker. They have to adapt or die. So we are guilty, yes. My culture is guilty. And I am facing that. And that's why I believe we have to do something to protect the ones who are now on sacrificial altar of the whole world in Sudan. Sudan get less attention of the media than any other conflict. They are just indigenous people. They are naked. They are not clothed. They have no big boots, no hats. But I, I am experiencing them since 79. They are as usually the indigenous people are. They are, they are, they are connected with the earth, with the nature. They are living still in much more symbiotic relationship than the rest of the world. They are having what we are losing or what, what we now wish to get back, harmony with the nature. This is the most typical for all indigenous people. I'm sure that you anthropologists already studied this. You know that anthropology changed very much. Anthropology is today not working for the imperialist or colonialist or the profiters. The, the anthropology is changing and it's seeking the human being. And myself, as an amateur, I'm getting more human beings here among them than in the highly developed Babylons of the East and West civilization of today. Sudan, it's the worst humanitarian crisis on the planet. Nowhere international community left people alone so much as here in Sudan. Mostly, this is the most indigenous country in the world beside Bolivia, for example. And nowhere in the world, the media is less present as in this God-forgotten, forsaken country. So this is why, with friends, we started producing books. We started bringing these people computers to get you out of the box of this ignorance and arrogance. Forgive me, please. I love you, people. I love you more than animals and trees. And I learned to love you and respect you because I saw you so different, so beautiful everywhere. But I still don't understand why it's so difficult to see that we people are naturally different. Even in Quran, you have the sentence, I, Allah, create you different so you can learn from each other. Why we are not learning from each other? We, we, we have so much to learn. Carl Jung said, there is still so much to discover. The world should not stay in this box. We must broken this box. And I believe all goods which came out after the Second World War came from Carl Jung. Not Freud. Corporations are using Freud what he discovered to manipulate the people and enslave us again. 70 corporations in the world are practically ruling everything today. Also our perceptions. That's why we are in the box. And I am suffering in this box. Whenever I come back from these people, I, I, wanna, I don't know what to do. Drink to death, hang myself, or take bombs and start throwing bombs. I produced a couple of films. I tried to explain nicely. Six, seven books, a lot of lobbying. Now, I believe in cameras. That you will see the beauty of this indigenous, with nature connected, in symbiotic relationship with animals and plants and minerals, water and everything exists, people. So we are distributing them cameras, little cameras, so the woman can hide them into the additional hole. We are trying to prevent the rape and other atrocities. There are bigger atrocities than the rape, much worse. I will not mention them. On the end of this, my appeal and my scream and cry, I will tell you experiences. Now, I wish to introduce you to somebody who is with us today 
and with whom we work in Sudan, in these border areas. He's a rebel. Yes, he's a rebel, but he has no gun. He's not a terrorist. <laughs> he loves his people. And I believe he learned, he's trying and learning to love also us. This gentleman who is today sitting with us as the only African in this uh, colorful public, it's Mr. Suleiman Jamus, humanitarian coordinator of the foreign rebels, always in civil, never in uniform, never killed nobody, never was present when they been doing killings on all sides. He was uh, elected to be chairman of the rebels in Darfur twice. In 2005, that's when I met him first time, and last year when he managed to help to unite all the rebels against the racism, against the total ignorance and arrogance of the elite in Arab part, North Sudan. Mr. Suleiman Jamus, please come and tell us why started the war and what are the reasons that it's not stopping, it's spreading, please. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, thank you for the Slovenians. Thank you for the University of Maribor and the rector giving me this opportunity to at least to say some few words about the conflict of Sudan starting from Darfur. The map. You know, Sudan is <clears throat> a country before before it is division, sorry, because uh, before it is division, it, the size-wise, it is one million square miles before it is divided to north and, and south. It's still the third biggest country in Africa. South Africa, Nigeria, and then Sudan still. Sudan came to, into independence in 1956. Then we have three families, three clans, three tribes in the center who were around the colonial administration. They inherited the country and they marginalized everyone. Our fellow southerners from 865 jobs, they were given only one. If even they were the one-third one of, the, of the country in population and in the, uh, the size of their area in Sudan, they were given only one seed in these jobs coming out from our inheritance of the colonial system. So they started warring, they started, they picked arms in 1955. Those are our fellow from the south side. We as Darfurians started to protest politically to, to, to at least to have our share. We were given only two jobs from that number of, uh, of jobs. So we started to protest our uh, fellow citizens in Darfur formed a protesting uh, form like uh, they named it Hell in 1960 and independence was in 1956 or after four years they started to protest, protest and they, they were denied also. In 56 they formed one in, 50, uh, in, in, in 60, they formed one, 61, 62, 65. They, uh, they uh, established a political front and they named it Darfur Development Front. And they were very critical to the center. 
the center fought, fought back by some kind of a policy of divide and rule. So we were put in uh, categories, of ethnical categories. African rooted tribes and the Arab rooted tribes. The Arab rooted tribes were the minority. So they equipped them, they gave them uh, weapons and encouraged them to fight or encouraged them to fight to scorch land to, margin, to the marginalized people in Darfur, those who are from the uh, African rooted tribes. In this case, the African rooted tribes fought back and they took arms against their fellow citizens. So because they are the minority, they tried to get, to, uh, to get support from the nomads of origin, uh, originally Arab tribes from the uh, neighboring countries from west of uh, Sudan, like Niger, Nigeria, and Cameroon, and uh, Chad. So when also these Africans who are owners of the land fought against these uh, militia brought from abroad, and they defeated them. Then the government, who was supporting them from under the table, came barely and with the military launching uh, war against the, the African uh, rooted tribes. So this is how the conflict started. Our fellow uh, Southerners fought from 1955 until 2005 in a process monitored by the international community, uh, they achieved some kind of peace deal named Comprehensive Peace uh, Agreement. Finally, they separated their land from the rest of Sudan, leaving us as marginalized, becoming like uh, on the front line with the center which is, uh, we, we've, we took arms against in 2003. Then, the international community with the lack of knowledge. They did not mark the, the borders between the two countries until today. This is the future ignition between the two countries. We fought from 19, uh, 1955 until 2005 and the, 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 the war is coming back again in place of southerners and, 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 and northerners, now it is coming between two countries. In, like, uh, in the border, if you see this uh, Blue Nile, now is uh, under uh, war, uh, Nuba Mountains, Abye, and to the west there is another point uh, named uh, Copper Hole and Kaka at Yaria along the, the River Nile. These are the conflict points between the two countries and I think in the media uh, last week, the southerners attacked a northern area and they occupied it for uh, some time and the international community cried to, uh, to the southerners to pull back and they pulled back uh, fortunately, but still the dispute is there and the fear is there that the war will start very soon between the two countries, north and south. In this stage, where are we as Darfurians? The international community sponsored some kind of a peace deal in Abuja in 2005. Unfortunately, it was affected by the interest of the Americans who were approaching some kind of uh, what they name uh, middle-term uh, elections. They want to achieve something to uh, at least to cheat the population to, uh, to, to vote for them. So they made some kind of a quick fix deal with a man who was promised if he did this, he will get the job of the manager of the World Bank. And he did that and he got the job. But the conflict was not addressed. But they just uh, made some kind of a paper and it was dead the second day after it was signed. Again, in 2000, uh, uh, 2010, 
2011, they sponsored another peace deal with the Darfurians in Doha, and it was also affected by the elections of the Americans and the competition between China and America on the wealth of the country. So it was also dead the second day it was signed because it did not address the, the root causes of the conflict. Now, uh, the conflict in Darfur is still going on because of the, still the same uh, policy of divide and rule, and now and, uh, we are now uh, facing the, the second year after the peace deal was, uh, was signed and nothing happened on the ground. Still, we are on, on the same stage of making a, a quick fix peace deal, leaving the root causes which ignites the war again on, uh, on the, on the, uh, in the country. <clears throat> in these days, there is war between the south and north in Blue Nile, Nuba Mountains, Abiye, and uh, Kafia Genji, which is the copper hole to the peak south, and in the area of Kakatijaria. Plus, the Darfurians fighting in Darfur and in Kordofan to the west. Darfur is peak uh, west, and then uh, uh, second is Kordofan, which is including the Nuba Mountain. All the, uh, the old dogs to, to the west of Sudan. The, the third point, which is, uh, we can name the peak uh, east, which is the, the, the port, the main port of, uh, of Sudan. Uh, there are the bigger tribes are, are starting war against the center also. For all this, Sudan is getting the biggest relief aid in the world now, fortunately. And having the biggest uh, military component and its mandate is to protect the civilians. But they are ill-equipped, ill-trained, inefficient, and the, and, the, and the area is too wide to cover with 20,000 troops. For that, they are, at least for me, they are only consuming money. They are only destroying the, 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 the money of the international community paid to run this uh, big, uh, big one, uh, big uh, uh, military component. Slovenians, Tomo Krizner and uh, Hope organization, which is uh, created by uh, his friend Kelemen Mihalic, came with an idea of bringing small cameras for the vulnerable children and women to photo the perpetrators of crime against these vulnerables. The effect of this for, for me, as a humanitarian coordinator, as a man living in the area under the con under control of the rebels, these cameras are much better than the 20,000 troops roaming the area with uh, a new and uh, very beautiful and very comfortable cars in the whole area, and they are doing nothing, and even they need who want to protect themselves from even the, the only, only the, the hijackers. Five, three can uh, encounter their, uh, their road and defeat them and hijack their cars. For all this, let me say what we need is to stop this conflict, which is depriving us from safety, 
like uh, and depriving us from education, our uh, children, we cannot take our children to, to the school, which is subjected to bombardment from, the gover from our government. So people are now deprived of education and uh, self-safety, plus uh, like uh, they are deprived from any kind of basic human rights because of this conflict. And the government is accused, uh, uh, causing himself that, uh, oh, uh, let us say, uh, pardoning, um, uh, the government pardoning itself because it is, there is instability, so I can't lead any kind of development in these uh, areas. For that, our need is to stop this war. But to stop this war is to address the root causes of the conflict, uh, of, of the conflict which is based on the policy of the center of divide and rule. Unless this happens, I don't think that there is any opportunity or any hope to stop the, the conflict. I'm sorry, you are speaking about uh, development, uh, building planes, and the music of life. These are good things, but to go to that, we need some kind of stability, at least to entertain what was said. It was good, and it was uh, said correctly in this uh, platform that most of the conflicts are man-made. To example that, like Osama bin Laden, he was created and built up by the Americans, and they fight against him, and they monopolized the whole world to fight against uh, Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden was a normal man in Saudi Arabia and Sudan, but when the Americans want him to fight against the Soviet, they created him, they enabled him to fight. After that, they fought against him. And now, they created one named Joseph Kony in Uganda, and now they started war against Joseph Kony. So most of these conflicts we are living, we are experiencing in the world are man-made. Thank you. Sorry to be so long, but uh, I think uh, my colleague Tomo can complete. Thank you. Just to complete it. Yes. Just to conclude it, the idea of video surveillance, it works. We managed, we succeed to attract, when the war started in Nuba Mountains last, last June, all medias with the footages of the worst war crimes, particularly the, the children, the, the woman being smashed in different parts of dissolving. This picture, this picture was the one who attracted the whole world. One picture, you see how little is necessary. We have practically no money. We, we collected from public after the screaming of this film, uh, Eyes and Airs of God, video surveillance of Sudan, in two months, 14,000 euros, which is nothing and it's plenty. It's plenty because it comes from the common people in the small village cinema halls around Slovenia only. Our plan is to get all media into Nuba, Darfur, back to Darfur, ABA, and now in Blue Nile. Why Blue Nile? Because it's more ignorant, the world is more ignorant about Blue Nile than about even these other provinces. We succeeded to start pushing media and even politicians to talk about. We succeeded to get George Clooney. He was like a god appearing with his reports. Yes, these guys are correct. We have to start negotiating with China. This should not go on. Some decisions should be made in very high level of these 70 corporations which are ruling the world to stop this. But we never succeed to get nobody to Blue Nile. Even Al Jazeera doesn't want to go with us on Friday. Now we are going back with big load of cameras, satellite modems, and computers. Again, two people alone. 
and one girl. She's going for the first time. Pray for us. <laughs> you know how they kill it, the chairman of Jem? On the Christmas Eve, at 3 o'clock in the morning, a new technology appeared on the sky of Sudan. Was Mick or was, what it was? Was Jet, was Russian was, Antono or was Chinese Mick? It is Fighter 5, Chinese made uh, aeroplane. Fighter 5. Big light and then rocket directly on GPS, isn't it? Yes. Any other people around killed? Only one. Only one, Ibrahim Khalil, the chairman who asked us for video surveillance. The chairman who asked us for holes. You know what they need in North Darfur? They need holes. Bore holes. Bore holes. For water. Yes. For water. Mm. They, there is the biggest lake of drinking water on the planet in the North Darfur. It was discovered for, for Western civilization in 2007. But people know there there is water since primordial times. That's why they all concentrated there. The fights, yes, is going on because people have no more drink, because there is climatic changes. We can ask Luchka Kaifesh more about this. There are climatic changes. Sahara is spreading seven kilometers a year. And the industrial countries are not doing nothing to help these uh, ec uh, this, this, uh, ecological immigrants, ecological refugees. So ignorant we are. Americans, in this case, are much better. The footages are going straight to uh, Defense Ministry of the United States. In Europe, I'm sorry, I have to say, nobody's interested in this. Nobody wants to, to, to know. It's, it's like taboo tema. We contacted the, the, the uh, high uh, Baroness, the Cox, the, the, um, the Asherton, the Minister for, for Foreign Affairs in Brussels. And she replied that she's too scared for European workers working in Khartoum. What brave nation, what brave people we are now. Where is the spirit of Europe? Where is the power, the will for living, for survival? I, I think we need to dig Europe and again express what we have the best, not to lose the trust of the people around the world so they will not turn all against us. I need to stop. Please, you can see this film in YouTube. We put it there, not to make money, but to scream and give these people the right to live, not luxurious life, not privileges to hell with that, just that they survive, that their children will not be killed. I have three. I'm sure everybody has, most of you have children. Imagine that you get your child dead, killed, because of the ignorance of the, your co-humans you can see, please, all this more in the YouTube. Just go under Tomo Krishnar, you will find that. Please, if you can help us, if you can go back to your countries, if you can do something, please contact us. We need you, because we respect you, we trust you. I do. Thank you. Thank you so much. For <laughs>